Hello and welcome to Project Wise Administrator Fundamentals Accreditation Course Modifying Attributes In this lesson, we will learn how to set up an attribute to be automatically populated with the right information as well as setting it up to read only so users cannot manually change it. We will also learn to create pick lists for a number of attributes including using SQL statements to generate the pick lists. We will also go through setting up a multi-line entry for an attribute as well as automatically convert user input to uppercase. We will also learn how an attribute can be automatically updated based on another attribute. Finally, we will learn how to set up the serial number to display five digits number and also prepare it with zeros. When we create an environment with attributes, as project-wise administrators, if we don't attach some intelligence to the back end for the attributes, it will be pretty dull as all the attributes will be text entries. For instance, the project ID attribute, we do not necessarily need any user input as this information can be retrieved from the project that the user is currently working on. So we will set it to read only. And then on the value tab, in the default value section from the type dropdown, select system variable, click on the browse button on the far right, go to the work area properties. Since the project that the user works on is a building project, scroll down until we can find building project number. Go ahead and hit OK. What this actually does is when a document is created in the current project. This project ID attribute will have the information that is retrieved from the current project, project number, and it will also be set to read only. Go ahead and hit OK. Next, we are going to generate a pick list for the area attribute. So let's go ahead and double click on area. Let's go to the value tab. Anytime when we want to create a pick list for an attribute, we will need to go to the value list section. Since this is going to be a short pick list, so we are just going to enter it manually. So from the type drop down, select fixed. Go to the browse button on the far right. Click on the add button. The first entry of the pick list, type in B for the value description building. Go ahead and hit OK. Click on add again to add the next entry of the pick list. RRW for value description roadway. Go ahead and hit OK. As we can see, even when we generate a short pick list, it still take a bit of time. So let's go ahead and hit OK and we will find an easier way to generate the pick list. Let's go ahead and copy this line that we just create. Go to any notepad program and paste that line. There is a pattern here and if we can understand it, we will be able to generate the pick list much quicker before the semicolon is the value. Right after the semicolon is the description. The pipe symbol, it allows us to create another entry for the pick list. We have a line here. Basically, it is all the values and description that will need to be the area pick list. So let's go ahead and copy that line. Go back to the administrator and open the area attribute. Right mouse click and paste. Since we only want users to pick any available entry from the pick list, and we don't want the users to type in something that do not exist in the pick list. So go ahead and enable the option limit to list and hit OK. We will also need to create a pick list for the level attribute. So go ahead and double click on level. Go to the value tab in the value list section from the type drop down, select fix. In notepad plus plus, there is a line which has the level pick list. Go ahead and copy this line. In the project wise administrator, the level attribute dialog window, paste that line as well as enabling the limit to list option. Go ahead and hit OK. We also want to create the pick list for the attribute doc type. So go ahead and double click on doc type. Go to the value tab in the value list section, the type drop down, select fix. Again, in notepad plus plus, there is a line which has the doc type pick list. Go ahead and copy that. Go back to the doc type attribute in the administrator and paste that line. 
enable the limit to list option. Go ahead and hit OK. So we have just seen three examples of creating the short pick list manually. Next, we are going to look at how we can create a pick list that shows a list of project-wise users, which can be found when we click on the user's node. The attribute that will show a list of project-wise users will be the drawn by. Let's go ahead and double click that and then go to the value tab. If we only want users to choose from the pick list, then go ahead and enable the option limit to list. There is a SQL statement which returns a list of project-wise users. So from the type dropdown, choose the option select. This is the SQL statement that will return a list of project-wise users. If we need the pick list to be sorted by the user's name, we can also do this as well. Order by O underscore username. Highlight this line, right mouse click, copy, and then go back to project-wise administrator module. In the SQL select statement for the drawn by attribute, right mouse click, paste. Go ahead and hit OK. Now that we have the drawn by attribute that shows a list of users as a result of executing the SQL statement, we also want the drawn date to be automatically updated to today's date whenever the drawn by attribute is chosen. So let's go ahead and see how that can be done. Double click on drawn date, go to the value tab. In the update value section, choose system variable. And then on the far right, click on the browse button. We want the drawn date to be automatically updated to today's date. Let's go ahead and select the current date. Click OK. We also only want the drawn date to be updated when the attribute drawn by is chosen. So let's go ahead and enable the option. Specific attributes are updated. Let's click on the browse button on the far right. Double click drawn by and hit OK. So by doing this, the attribute drawn date is going to update to today's date when the drawn by attribute is chosen. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Next, we are going to see how the revision note attribute can allow multi-line entries. So go ahead and double click on the ref note attribute, then go to the editing tab, control type, select multi-line, edit field. Go ahead and hit OK. We also want to make sure that title one, two, and three will convert anything that the user enter to uppercase. So go ahead and double click on title one attribute, go to the editing tab, in the format string, type in uppercase. Go ahead and hit OK. Repeat the same for Title 2 and repeat the same for Title 3 as well. Another attribute that we need to work on is the serial number. We need this attribute to display five digit number as well as prepare it with zeros. Let's go ahead and see how that can be done. Double click on serial number attribute. Go to the editing tab. In the format string, type in this value. This means if serial number is 10, it will be prepared with three zeros and then 10. If the serial number is 100, it will be prepared with two zeros and then 100. And then go ahead and hit OK. There are two more things that we need to configure. First, we need to enable the required option for the area attribute. Go ahead and hit OK. Then we need to right mouse click on the My Company environment and then enable the option Create Attribute Records upon document creation. Go ahead and hit OK. These final two items that we configure for my company environment ensure that when users bring documents into ProjectWise, their attributes have to be properly populated to generate a correct naming convention for the documents. Otherwise, these documents will not even be allowed to be saved into the relevant ProjectWise folder. We just demonstrate how each of these attributes have been configured. So please make sure we complete the exercise that is listed on this slide. During this lesson, we have learned how to set up an attribute to be automatically populated with the right information, as well as setting it up to read only so users cannot manually change it. We also learn how to create pick lists for a number of attributes, including using SQL statements to generate the pick list. We also learned how to set up an attribute 
to allow multi-line entry, as well as converting user input to uppercase. We also learned how to update an attribute automatically based on another attribute. Finally, we also learned how to set up the serial number attribute to display five digits number and pad it with zeros. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.